Uh, we welcome Professor John Cam, who is President of Arrhythmia Alliance and Trustee of the AF Association and a world-renowned expert on atrial fibrillation. Thank you, Professor Cam, for joining us. During this unprecedented time, as we're told day after day with the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, a lot of our patients are extremely worried how COVID-19 and may impact atrial fibrillation. Uh, we've had lots of questions and we just wondered if we could share a few with you so that we can reassure hopefully our patients and their, their loved ones. One question, I have AF and I'm under 70, no other conditions. Should I be self-isolating during the COVID pandemic? We don't know that atrial fibrillation per se is a large risk for patients who develop COVID-19 infections. Uh, we do know the general statement that underlying heart problems pose a risk. And we know in particular that high blood pressure, for example, and diabetes are major risk factors. We do not know that simply having atrial fibrillation imposes greater risk. But I think most people are making the assumption that it may do. We don't uh, actually have any good evidence that that is the case. So I would not feel that you have to self-isolate for that reason alone. But I think that you should bear in mind that your heart is not entirely normal if you have atrial fibrillation. And an important question is what other heart problems you have? Why do you have the atrial fibrillation? Is there some heart problem that has caused the atrial fibrillation? Because that might be conferring more risk. Perhaps, for example, underlying coronary artery disease. There's a risk there with uh, COVID-19 infections and that condition causes atrial fibrillation. So think about that aspect rather than worrying specifically about atrial fibrillation. Thank you. And if a person contracts uh, COVID-19 coronavirus, should they continue taking any medication that they've been prescribed for AF? Usually the medication prescribed for atrial fibrillation doesn't cause any problem with the infection itself. There may be the possibility of interactions between the medicine used to treat the COVID and their general state of health and drugs given for atrial fibrillation. I'm thinking of anticoagulants, for example, Many medications will interfere with anticoagulants, particularly with warfarin. And I'm thinking of antiarrhythmic drugs, such as amiodarone. Amiodarone has a series of side effects related to the fact that it prolongs the time necessary for the heart muscle to recover. And uh, that may be aggravated and worsened by some of the drugs that are being used for COVID-19. Uh, some of the antibiotics in particular may interact with drugs like amiodarone. And in that, that case, uh, you have to be very careful and the doctors have to be aware of the fact that you're taking these medications and they obviously have to uh, make some decisions about it. Now, often patients with COVID infections have been dealing with the whole infection at home, never seeing any doctors at all. And in them, I think it, it can raise a problem in their mind uh, because they've not got the uh, ability to ask the doctors. But basically, if you're not having any other treatments, you've just got, um, let's say, a mild or moderate COVID-19 infection, you feel lousy, et cetera, there's no need to change any of your medication. It's only if other doctors come along and for one reason or another have to prescribe other medicines that these interactions can cause some problems. 
Thank you. Now we've had a flood of inquiries from patients who, because uh, clinics are closed, uh, appointments are being cancelled or postponed, their doctors are uh, recommending that they switch from warfarin to a NOAC or a DOAC uh, to avoid the need for the INR blood tests. Many are concerned whether they will still be protected from an AF-related stroke. I wonder if you could explain and, uh, and reassure as many have been on warfarin for years and, and don't necessarily see the need for change. Well, I quite understand that predicament. Clearly, if a patient's been taking a drug successfully for a long time, they don't really want to change. But warfarin, as we all know, needs you to go from time to time to have a blood test called an INR. And this could be anywhere between weekly intervals through to as much as every three months. But basically, everybody taking warfarin or any other kind of vitamin K antagonist medicine needs regular blood tests. The DOAC medicines do not need these blood tests. And that's because they don't interact with other medication. They don't interact with food and they have relatively short elimination uh, times. So for one reason or another, they don't need INRs. So if you have a situation where you can't get INRs done, the recommendation might be to move to a DOAC drug. Now, are they as good as warfarin? The answer is unequivocally yes. They are in many ways better than warfarin. So the patient should not have anxiety about moving to these medicines. But what he does or she does have to remember is that you have to take these medicines on a regular basis. So if they're prescribed once daily, that means whatever time of day, day after day, you have to take it at the same time. If it's twice daily, again, 12 hours apart, at the same times every day. And you can't omit these medicines. That's their one difficulty because they're very short elimination times. And if you don't take them, then you've got no drug in the bloodstream and it's not obviously going to work if it's not there. So that's all you have to remember to do. Now, there are some difficulties, I think, in moving from warfarin to a NOAC because you're taking an anticoagulant, your blood's not clotting. When do you stop the warfarin and when do you start a new drug? Now, normally we do this by testing the INR and watching the anticoagulation from warfarin drop away, and then we start the NOAC drugs. If you can't do the INR measurements, that's more difficult. So in those circumstances, I think a discussion with a doctor who wants to prescribe the NOAC is necessary in order to decide how many days after stopping the warfarin should it be before you start the DOAC or NOAC drug. And I've heard that there are four different NOACs. How will my doctor know which is the best NOAC for me? Well, there is no single best NOAC. They're all highly effective. But some have got some disadvantages in some patient groups. Uh, but apart from that, there's, there's no real reason for choosing one over the other. And the doctor can look up uh, the, the specifications of the drug on his computer and he can find the groups that are best treated with one drug or another. But in essence, the majority of patients can be treated with any of the NOAC drugs. So it's just the same as, you know, there are a range of antibiotics and the doctor prescribes the one that he feels is best for you. That's Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and one final question, I have AF and high blood pressure. Am I more at risk or more vulnerable to COVID? The high blood pressure is certainly a risk factor. So you are more vulnerable to COVID and you're probably more vulnerable. Well, we know you're more vulnerable to uh, uh, the effects of the COVID virus. You may have a, a worse time of it because you've got a high blood pressure. I'm not sure that you're more likely to pick it up if you have a high blood pressure, but certainly we know it's a risk factor for those who've got COVID. 
they will not have as easy a time or as uh, possibly good time as others uh, who develop this infection. So I think the point is that if you've got hypertension, if you develop COVID, uh, you, you should alert your doctor that you've got symptoms of COVID and you've got this history of high blood pressure should you be uh, presenting yourself to the hospital. Thank you, Professor Cam. I'm sure that will bring a lot of reassurance to our patients. Uh, and these messages will certainly be going across our websites and social medias and forums, etc. Thank you for your time. And I hope you stay safe and stay home as well. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Judy.